three consecutive John Player Cups, four consecutive Premiership titles between 99 and 2002, and of course the first team to win back-to-back -back Heineken Cup. They made the last six Premiership finals. They dearly love to make it a seven. Now, I'm delighted to say that joining us today is the Leicester fullback, Arnon fullback, Jordan Murphy, who better to show us around Welford Road than Jordan Murphy. So welcome to Aviva Behind the Bat. This week, we take a masterclass in the art of coaching as we reflect on the illustrious career of Richard Cockrell and his transition from player to coach. We then walk through the players' pre-match preparations, what's going on in their minds, bodies and souls before they take the field. And of course, there's the player challenge, but this week with a slightly different tone, as the forwards, mentored by myself in the Simon Cowell role, take on the backs, mentored by Jordan Murphy in the Cheryl Cole role. Jordan, forwards against backs, it's as old as the game. I'm confident. Are you confident? Yeah, I think I wouldn't be here today if I wasn't confident. You know, I think the backs always feel that they've got the edge on the forwards. You know, better looking, more skillful, more intelligent. Um, yeah, we've got everything going for us, so I really, you know, I fear for you guys today. Now, one man who epitomises the spirit of the Leicester Tigers played over 200 games for the club and was right at the heart of the infamous ABC club. But as his rugby career started to wind down, he picked up the challenge of coaching. Richard Cockerell, director of rugby, it seems to fit pretty well. Maybe, maybe a few years ago, people wouldn't have thought it was the obvious one, but yeah. you wear it well. Well, I'm, I'm enjoying it. The, the reason I do it well is because I've got great people. Matt O'Connor, Paul Burke, fantastic coaches that help me every day. The infrastructure here, Peter Wheeler, um, you know, he's my boss and he mentors me um, occasionally when I start to get a little bit too um, above my station and it works really well. So we've spoken to the coach, we find out what makes his brain tick. Now it's time just to get inside the minds of the players. I'm here with Danny Hipkiss. Are you a heavy sleeper the night before a game or do you, you know, wake up quite early or well, what's your routine leading into the match day? Yeah. Tough times is when you're in a hotel, when you're away from home, you know, different mattresses. Um, you know, dodgy roommates sometimes can be doing some, some other things to you uh, uh, late at night. Here in the Crumbie stand, it's an old wooden stand and, and just before kickoff, the opposition team obviously will, will go out first. Um, the, the, the crowd in the stand above will, will stamp their feet and bang on the stand, which creates a, an electric atmosphere, almost like thunder or a train rolling past the room. How does that make you feel? Uh, yeah, it, it gets you up and I'm sure the, the opposition are feeling the same, you know. You, just walking out through the crowd and having the crowd on top of you here, um, you know, particularly in the Combi stand, it's, it's been a great stand throughout the history of, of Leicester Tigers. Uh, it does kind of get the hairs on the back of your neck standing right up. Well now we've had a good look at the pre-match preparation at Welford Road and the mental side of things. Let's have a look at the physical side of things back at Oval Park where we'll have a backs versus forwards challenge. So it's that time again, the players challenge and this time we're going old school. Forwards against backs, the way it always should be. Forwards first. Craig Newby has got to get the ball from there into that net. Seems simple. Hit through it, hit through it. Great. Oh. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to take an early lead here with Dan Hipkiss. Oh. Oh. You've lost that one. So the first question, the vainest member in the team. Who would it be? The, the, the vainest guy in the Tiger squad. Uh, Scott Hamilton, easily. Tom, your turn. Oh, yeah, oh, he's it. hit the net. Tell you what, that isn't too shabby at all, but uh, yeah, we're responding with our uh, Argentinian golfer here. Some bitches. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. so question, mate. My question would like to be, uh, there was a team social on a uh, Thursday night. Who was worst behaved on the evening? And can you tell us anything about it? <laughs> you, you Rengo, you're going to have to... Sure, answer. Rengo, yeah. What's What have you heard? Scott Not a bad effort. Not a bad effort. The pressure's on again. Who has the worst banter in the club? I get the most abuse for my name. So. I probably don't give it out. What about, uh, I mean, Billy, obviously, you, you're giving him a little bit of a stick. Yeah, but he's, he's got a great name and he's a good looking lad. He's always going to get stickers. Yeah, yeah, very true. He has got possibly the best name in world rugby since uh, Martin Bayfield. Um, oh, you know him, didn't you? Martin, Martin Bayfield, yeah, yeah. He, he kind of yeah. drifted in and out of the yeah. game, didn't he? You do expect 
I know, sort of a red Indian to run on the field when you hit B12 trees now. Do you know the funny thing is, his dad's actually a tree surgeon. <laughs> so it's been a fantastic day, but where better to end than in front of one of the most impressive trophy cabinets you're ever going to see. You can, of course, follow your club right the way through to the end of the season, right here on Aviva Behind the Badge.